So I've really fallen in love with constitutional law as of late. So I decided to read some of the foundational texts that deal with the Constitution of the United States and its founding. So the most important first thing to read is the Magna Carta because it is a document that was heavily relied upon by the founders of the United States and obviously it was extremely influential as a whole. So I just read the Magna Carta and I'll be giving you a very brief summary, not an in-depth breakdown. There are actually a good amount of words in the Magna Carta that I had to look up. Some of the words like Kaidel's didn't even have a definition that I could find. So definitely some old British language being utilized in here. In England in the 1200s, nobles, King John and the church were all fighting each other for power. This is a document that was written by people of both sides in which the nobles or barons as they're called in the Magna Carta guaranteed rights and negative liberties to protect the rich from the king. It also established the independence and freedom of the church from the king's influence. Keep in mind that this actually applied to almost nobody as this was a time of feudalism which means most of the people were just peasant serfs living lives of indentured servitude. These rights were only given to freemen which is basically just the 1%. There are multiple provisions talking about women, but specifically widows to the rich nobles. It gives the few extremely wealthy and powerful widows the right to keep their money, not to be kicked out of their house the day their husband dies for 40 further days, and allows them to stay unmarried if they wish. Again, this applied to almost no women, just the extremely wealthy nobles. In it, it also says that, quote, No person shall be arrested or imprisoned upon the appeal of a woman for the death of any other than her husband. Wow. This means that a woman's testimony was not accepted for charges of murder for anyone unless it's her husband, meaning she doesn't really have almost any legal representation. The Magna Carta gives, quote, freemen rights to essentially life, liberty, and property with the protection of due process of law. For example, Clause 39 says, quote, No freeman shall be taken or imprisoned or decised or exiled or in any way destroyed, nor will we go upon him nor send upon him, except by the lawful judgment of his peers or by the law of the land. It also gives nobles the rights to only being fined by a jury of their peers, quote, Earls and barons shall not be immersed except through their peers and only in accordance with the degree of the offense. Magna Carta also includes a provision in which it created a council of 25 barons to make sure that the king had actually held up his end of the deal and made sure that these rights were not infringed. That council actually ended up turning into the Parliament of England. Clause 63 sums up the Magna Carta very well, quote, Wherefore we will and firmly order that the English church be free, and that the men in our kingdom have and hold all the aforesaid liberties, rights, and concessions well and peacefully, peaceably, freely and quietly, fully and wholly for themselves and their heirs, of us and our heirs, in all respects and, and in all places forever, as is foresaid. Now, why did King John sign this lessening of his power in 1215? Well, he was under pressure because of a war with France, which pressured him into signing the Magna Carta to keep peace at home. Keep in mind that this is also an extremely foundational document in Western political science, which is based on the theory of pluralism, which means multiple groups fighting each other actually leads to guarantees of rights. In this case, you have the nobles, the king, and the church all fighting each other, which leads to rights guarantees. Whereas in Russia, for example, Ivan the Terrible had wiped out almost all of the nobles and was able to concentrate all of their power amongst himself. And we see that autocracy is completely the core of their political culture. The Magna Carta didn't actually do much at the time, as it only applied to the nobles who were essentially just the 1%. Super rich. It did nothing for the vast, vast, vast majority of people, but it set the stage for eventually the Constitution of the United States and other nations' constitutions and rights given to their peoples.